let's take a look at the brushes in the Ocean Gardens set and see how to use them. If you purchased the Ocean Brush set from Etsy, it's going to come in two segments. So there's going to be Ocean Gardens 1A and Ocean Gardens 1B. So I'm going to go ahead and try these two uh, watercolor rollers here. Number one watercolor roller and the number two watercolor roller because those are going to create the background for all the other elements. So um, let me show you how I use them and then you can experiment and who knows maybe you'll discover some new ways to use it that I haven't thought of. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to start with, let's see, number one I'm going to let you know is a little bit uh, deeper and intense color, it lays on more intense color, and number two is sort of more of a light texture, um, if that helps you at all. So I'll start with the number one. And let's see, if I go to my palettes here, you'll see here's my Ocean Gardens palette, and I have on the second row, I have sort of um, cold blues going all the way to uh, magentas and on the first row I have warm blues going all the way into the greens and so I'm going to play with these um, pretty much on the right side of the first and second rows and I'm going to just lay down layers and layers and layers of color using these two rollers back and forth. I'm going to start from a, sort of a deep dark mysterious ocean here and then I'm going to get lighter and lighter where uh, the ocean goes up closer to the top of the surface. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so here we go. I'll start with my dark blue and like I said I'm just going to start laying in some things here, some color, and I'm going to use both warm blues and cold blues. And let's see, I didn't use much of watercolor roller number two, so I'm gonna try a little bit of that. I'm even gonna go to a little bit of a light green way at the top. Ooh. I do like how uh, watercolor number two really is a little bit lighter. I like layering it over uh, watercolor one. And I'm even gonna go to the far bottom corner here, use some black, just uh, real transparent black, just to add a little bit more depth to the dark areas of the ocean here. All right. All right. So once you have some random color in there, uh, color and texture, um, you can leave it like this, which is pretty interesting, or you can take another step um, and just gently blend it with itself. Let me show you how. I'm going to go into the smudge tool now. It looks like a little fingers smudging. <laughs> and I'm going to set it to one of the watercolor rollers. And I'm gonna set it, I think, to watercolor roller number two. And so I'm actually using a textured smudge tool and it will kind of blur it out a little, but it'll still leave some of that beautiful texture. And I can smudge you know, forward and bring some of the light color down if I want and smudge up. 
or I can just smudge straight up and down. I'm just kind of play with it a little bit until until it, it matches your vision. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I want until I see it. And um, wow, ooh, I just love this. I'm gonna leave that. <laughs> and that's really has a lot of texture. Um, I don't know if I like that or not. I kind of do. Hmm. That is interesting. I think I'll leave it. <laughs> it's very textural. Um, and then if I want to change it later, I can. So there you go. I used both rollers in an abstract way, went from dark to light, and then I used the smudge tool and set it to the roller to um, just kind of smudge it a little bit but retain a little bit of texture. I think that makes a beautiful background. All right, so I'm gonna add a new layer now, and I'm going to go ahead and try out some of the brush stamps on top of here. So let's see, what one will I pick first? Um, all of the brushes and stamps in the set, um, part 1A and part 1B, if you got it in two sets, um, they're all one color. Uh, the only one that's two color is this little sponge here. It, I don't know why, but I just felt that I wanted to throw that in there because it looked so good with the rest of them. So there you go. I'll try the one, number one coral one color stamp now on a separate layer. And let's see, I'll go to my palette here or you know, you could pick any color you want on these other palettes. I'll start with here. I think I'll t take um, maybe one of the reds. And let's see, how big is it? Okay, about 40%. Let's try it. Woo, nice. I think I'd like to make it even a brighter, lighter color. There we go. Oh yeah, that's very vibrant, isn't it? I really like that. There, and, and I'm gonna do a new layer and try a new brush. Okay, so here is the number two coral, and this is based on something called a mushroom coral. It does look a little bit like a mushroom. Let's see, I think I'll pick, mm, I think I'll try this. And I'm doing a new layer. Okay, and then maybe I'll do like that color for there. And then I'm going to take this one and just uh, shrink it a little and turn it so that they're not so the same. So I'm in the select tool. Uh, I'll do freehand. I'll grab it. Uh, select the little arrow icon for rotating it. Let's see, grab that little green dot up there, there. And then grab the one of the little blue anchor points and resize it. And then I think I'll pull it over here. And I think I'll, whoa! I think I'll go ahead and rotate this one too. So I'm in the select freehand. Um, now I select it, the transformation tool, grab the little green dot there, and move it about like that. Hmm, that's fine. All right, now I think I'll select both of them <laughs> and move them over and shrink them a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep uh, going through all these one color stamps, except for the sponge I'll save for last because it's two color. And I'll put one on each layer. So here we go.
All right, so I laid down um, a whole bunch of one color stamps. And then I can go now, and since they're all on different layers, I can resize them and move them and start to create a composition. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to group them. So let's see, these are all the one color stamps. So I'm going to select the first layer I did, and then I just lightly swipe and grab all the other one color stamps, and then I hit group. And I will call this group, let's see, rename, um, let's see, one. color stamps and I can hit the little arrow and close it and actually turn them off and on as I need them. Right now I'm going to put them on pause and create some more layers before I start doing my composition. Alright so now let's go ahead and um, put down a bunch of the brushes. So let's see here. I have to look, read what I have here. Okay, and here is the number two seaweed, the number three seaweed, and the number four seaweed. Oh, that's those are all brushes. So let's go for it. Okay, number two seaweed coming up. All right, so this one, I'm gonna get, let's see, like a light color green. We'll, we'll try that one. Um, this one is a pressure sensitive brush, so I'm going to want to practice it first before I do it. Um, as, I, as I press down heavy, it gives me a thick line, and as I let up, I get a thin line, and then a thick line, and a thin line. But I want to do it in a nice smooth motion that is sort of like I'm drawing a wave. I'm, in fact, I'm going to draw it this way and then turn it. That's just easier for me. So I'm pressing down, light, down, light, down. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll just rotate it. But I'm practicing with my pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, heavy pressure, light. And I'm, and I'm doing a sort of an undulating motion. All right, so once I have that, I could go ahead and go to my transform tool. Let's see, I'll do uniform, transform, and I'll grab that little green circle there and rotate it. Resize it a little, because that's a little big. <laughs> and kind of pull it to the side there. Oh, got to hit that arrow again. There we go. All right. So there's my seaweed brush. Now let's try a couple of other brushes. New layer. Uh, let's try the number three seaweed. And I'll give it maybe a light blue green. Why not? Let's try that. Okay, so this one is also pressure sensitive. So the harder I press, the bigger it is and then it gets smaller as I lighten up. But it's also um, sensitive to how fast your motion is. So, you, so, so practice it a little. Um, you want a swift but not too fast of a motion. Um, and I'm going to undulate it again. Let's see. So I'm going to practice that. So if I go too fast, yeah. <laughs> it starts to fall apart. And if I go too slow, it starts to fall apart. So let's see. Hmm. I've found that this one works better as sort of a thin instead of really large. I mean, you could go really large. Um, um, and it does start to break up. That's just sort of the nature of <laughs> the program. But um, you can always go back and touch it up with another brush, or you can just keep them kind of thin, which is what I'm going to do, because that seems to work really nicely.
All right. Okay, so there we go. That is number three seaweed. Okay. Go back to my layers. Add another layer here. And I'm going to try number four seaweed. And I think I'll use sort of the purples for that one. Purples and pinks. Okay. And, oops, I'm in the wrong one. <laughs> number four seaweed, there we go. Now this one is also pressure sensitive, so these little things will get smaller the lighter your pressure, and the heavier the bigger it'll be. But you can also control some of the size over here. I think I'll make a little branch off of it because uh, this particular seaweed does like branch off. And let's see, I think that's good. I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, so that is the one color um, brushes. I'm gonna go ahead, go to my layers, select the first one and then gently swipe to the right and highlight all of them and group them. And I will call this one, one color brushes. All right. And I'll just turn off the visibility for right now and open a new layer and now I'm going to show you the sponge, which is a two color stamp. It's sort of the little extra thing that I threw into here. Um, and if you haven't used a two color stamp, you can watch my brush basics or you can learn it right here. So let's do it. I'm going to click it and then I go up to the little active color circle. Um, I'm going to use a very deep red for my first color. And then for my second color, I have to choose one of these panels to see it. And I'm going to choose the classic, but you're welcome to pick any of the others, as long as it's not that last one there. So the classic, um, and there's my Ocean Garden set. But look, oh, there it is. There's my dark color, and here's a space to put another color. So I'll click it. And in there, I'm going to put maybe a really light, um, hmm, or just a some kind of color to contrast with it. So like a maybe a golden yellow. And generally with a lot of my brushes, you want the darker color on the right hand swatch. So, um, so I've got to get it that in there. Um, but if this, if your active color is showing, whatever it's showing is actually going to end up being the primary color. So when I hit, when I hit stamp, it's going to actually flip-flop this. But to make it easy, I'm just going to click this again. <laughs> okay, click that one so that you don't get confused. Okay, so that's what I want. I want the active color to be yellow, the primary color to be yellow, and the secondary to be that deep red because I, I've i made the brushes so the darker color usually goes on that side. But you have to make sure these two match. Um, so watch my brush basics if you have trouble. Um, I have a section on there about two color brushes. All right, so there's the two color brush. Let's see, and there we go. I'll make a big one so you can see it. <laughs> all right, so let's take a look at it. Wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I put all this texture in there as well. Um, so I don't know why, but for some reason when I was designing this, this just went perfect with all the other stamps. It just had to be there, so there you go. Um, practice how to set up two colors um, because it can be a little bit tricky. Okay, so last but not least, I have a bubbles brush, 
and you can create like little bubbles and whatever color you pick it's going to kind of jitter the colors around so so say I pick this um, light aqua it's going to do like different shades darker and lighter of of that whoops I have to have a layer going here we go there we go so I can see there's sort of my light aqua but then it shifted over a little bit to the um, cooler blues and um, and that's the beauty of it. It kind of jitters about jitters size and jitters um, colors. And um, you can create big bubbles. You can create little bubbles. You can um, pick different colors. And you can just have a lot of fun with this. I usually put it close to the end. Once I have my composition, then I kind of figure out where I want to put some little bubbles. Um, but there you go. All right, so now I have all these stamps stamped on different layers, and all I have to do is go to each layer and start composing and create a composition.
Congratulations for learning how to use my Procreate brush sets. And hit subscribe to learn about new and upcoming brush sets and fun tutorials for Procreate and Adobe Fresco.